Hey guys, welcome back to Cassandra's Motivations. I'm your host, Cassandra. So November has been a really interesting month with all the information that we have learned about certain individuals, especially those in the music industry, you know. Um, Cassie, <laughs> kind of like a namesake. Her real name is Cassandra Ventura. She was able to finally find herself strong enough to speak out against Diddy. This woman found a 35-page lawsuit, guys, against this man, alleging all kinds of things. And I do talk about that on my website. I kind of went through the case and um, added links so that you could find it. And you could find that on the website under the blog section. And that is www.abusemenot.com. So make sure you guys check that out and look at all the interesting things that I was able to uncover the story is so huge, guys. There's so many bits of information. Um, but today, I just want to applaud Cassie for speaking out, not being afraid, and for telling her truth. Because what it did was it opened the door for others to come forward and to begin to share what had happened to them. And all of this was possible or made possible because the adults of the Adult Survivors Act that was filed into or signed into law in New York about a year ago or a year and a half ago because the time limit started six months after they signed the bill. So because of that, it allowed for survivors to come forward with their allegations and file a civil lawsuit. Okay. So um, again, you can find out more about what I wrote about that on the website, abusemenot.com, and you can read through the story. Today, I kind of want to talk about one article that I came across in the Forbes, on the Forbes website, and they kind of go over statistics about, um, you know, DV or domestic violence and um, essays, assaults, and um, the R word, you know, for content purposes. They kind of go over that into detail. Um, and so I kind of wanted to discuss that because it is important to take a look at the statistics, you know. Um, one of the questions that several people were asking as in some of the videos was why did it take so long for survivors of assault and abuse to come forward? Well, there are many reasons for that, you know, but it, regardless, you're just grateful that finally she made the efforts to come forward. All right. So moving along, we'll get into this article on the Forbes website. All right, welcome back after that brief intermission. I do have my iPad here to be going over some of the notes. Like I said, I wanted to touch on some of the things that was written in the Forbes article that I came across. And this article is titled, Cassie's Lawsuit Against Diddy Reignites the Me Too Conversation in Hip Hop. So it's saying that it's reigniting the conversation. We should have been reignited this conversation in my own opinion, but I am grateful that we can talk about it now because there was so much covered in this. Um, I don't want to liken it to what happened with, um, you know, the Pied Piper of R&B, but <laughs> it's very similar, it seems, okay? So they do cover what is going on in the lawsuit and the allegations that Cassie made against Diddy. Okay. But then they have uh, more in this article. They talk about how in 2006 survivor and activist Tarana Burke founded the me too movement in 2017, the hashtag tag went viral. Okay. So since 2017, we have been talking about this and some people have come forward. We've seen big names taken down like Harvey Weinstein. We've seen what happened to Bill Cosby, among others. There were so many. We've seen Epstein even, you know, the situation with him and the girlfriend. And then there was another one. Um, forgive me, the names escaped me. I did not do research on them for this one, but it was like... Um, I know it was the girl from Smallville who was involved in that case. And she was charged with finding girls and bringing them back to the guy that she was working for, for another company. So this has been widespread guys. Okay. But when it comes to 
ethnicity and the race of the individual. They are saying that oftentimes black women do not come forward because they are often not believed. And I am looking for that part now so that we can discuss that. But that is a sad thing to even acknowledge. You know, there's a lawyer who talks about it in this article. And again, it's just a sad thing to even acknowledge and to have to um, to deal with, you know, especially when it comes to trying to take down powerful men and powerful people. You know, it's just something we have to contend with. All right, we are back now that I've found the place that I need to be. So according to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, their stats show that women are more oftentimes victims or more often likely to experience DV or intimate partner violence than men, okay? And then they say that we are marginalized and oppressed communities. They face unique challenges when it comes to this type of situation and they're more vulnerable. So again, this article is talking about the disparities between the two groups that women experience it more. Now men do experience it. So we cannot deny that fact. And oftentimes men do not come for it at all. So it's something that we really do need to learn how to find a way to talk about and to speak up about, you know, you can't allow another person to take advantage of you and then just sit and allow it. You know, it's, you don't discover that other people will help you until you find the courage to do so. Okay. So it says that black women experience some of the highest rates of domestic abuse. Okay. And this statistic shocked me. And I've seen these numbers before, but they were not as high. But as of 2011 survey, 41% of black women experienced physical violence at the hands of an intimate partner compared to 31% of white women. That number is quite high, guys. And um, we can sit back and pretend that it doesn't exist. We can sit back and pretend that... Um, we don't have to get involved or do anything about it. But um, unfortunately, what happens is that number, when it continues to grow, then it begins to affect you personally. Because especially if you have female family members, now it's affecting your family, you know? So it would behoove us to try to do something, okay? Even if it's just encouraging someone to speak out, creating a safe space for them to speak out, you know? And I, I think we're doing better, but we still have a long way to go, okay? Because 41%, guys, like, just the African-American population in America is only 13%. So almost half of the females are experiencing violence. It says a lot, you know? Jahan J. Carter, who is an attorney, he shared that black women have been conditioned to protect black men. And even in Cassie's lawsuit, she did state that, you know, she felt she needed to protect his status and uh, protect his empire. You know, and unfortunately, when it comes to Stockholm syndrome, most victims have that thought process, you know. And so that answers that question of why it takes so long for them to come forward because they're dealing with the guilt. They're dealing with um, a messed up warped thought process that tells them that they are doing something wrong by telling on the perpetrator, you know? And so getting them in trouble is not really what they're looking to do. And when you've been conditioned to protect someone, regardless of what they're doing, you tend to keep on protecting them you know, even to your own detriment. And that is what needs to change. Another part in here also talks about how when black women do come forward, that they have to prove beyond proof that something actually happened to them because they are not believed, you know? And that is the saddest part, that they are overly scrutinized and 
the burden of proof that they have to come up with tends to be more than for others, you know? And I mean, we can question all day why that is. And we kind of know that, you know, we've been conditioned, <laughs> unfortunately, to not take what they are saying seriously. One thing that I was grateful about in this lawsuit for Cassie was that there were several times where she stated witnesses. And not only did she list these witnesses in her lawsuit, but these witnesses also came forward and corroborated a lot of the statements and allegations that she's made, you know? And so you have to be grateful for the, the little wins that we get, but we got a long ways to go, guys. 41%, that's a huge number. And I don't know about you, but, um, you know, when it comes to instigating transformation, I just took it we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep pressing the issue, keep saying stuff, find ways to motivate and instigate that transformation. Can't just come out straight away and tell someone the information. I've watched that. You know, we've seen online how the attacks start and how um, we can watch people abuse others, even on these social media platforms. And most of the times, you know, a lot of people won't speak up grateful for the ones that do it's just you know that herd mentality is something you have to work on and it is an individual process because it is easy to fall in line and follow the herd unfortunately and so going against the grain and going against the stream is a concerted effort you have to make a conscious effort to do it you know and so i'm just praying and hoping that through this, that we don't just give up and revert back to the same old, same old, you know, making excuses for abusers or making excuses for those who want to do harm to others. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will be trying to do more on this topic because, again, there was so much information out there, so many things to dig up and uncover. And I know I did not cover it all, but, you know, going forward, at least we got some content we can work on. All right. Bye. <laughs>